Our uh, sixth group is uh, on the topic of billiards with a twist. So the advisor was Jaidev Athraya, and the uh, three uh, presenters are uh, uh, Nicholas Cecile, Thibault Langley, and uh, Michael Wijaya. Okay, so we're presenting billiards with a twist. Wrong direction. So, we first started with billiards in the square. So this is where you have a physically ideal billiard table where there's no friction, there's no gravity, and collisions are perfectly elastic. And you start with a billiard ball with a known position and velocity and wonder what happens over time. It turns out that if the slope of the line is rational, the orbit of that billiard ball is periodic. It'll repeat eventually. And if the slope is irrational, it won't repeat. And in fact, in the irrational case, you find that the collision points are dense and equidist equidistributed around the square. So we move to considering uh, what happens in a circle. But the twist is that instead of bouncing in the normal physical sense, you uh, hit the billiard ball with the transform 1 over z. And we wonder what happens. What happens over time? Do you get the same question? Do you get the same um, results on periodicity? Or do you get density? That kind of thing. Um, so to explain our notation, um, when the point is on the disk or when it's on the un unit circle, you can just describe it with theta and alpha, where theta is the angle from the horizontal of the position, and alpha is the angle from the horizontal of the velocity. So that's what that diagram here shows. Um, the and the idea is the impact point in the first quadrant is the first thing that happens, and then the one over z transform moves you down to the impact point in the second, uh, sorry, in the fourth quadrant, and then it flows across the circle. Um, and th these are the results, what happens to your initial point in terms of theta and alpha. So we started with a simple case, the radial case, where the billiard ball, billiard ball starts in the center and moves radially. And as you can see, the billiard ball eventually ends up just where it started with the same velocity. Um, and that means it's periodic. And it's periodic for any angle. So then we move to a more general case where you don't know at the beginning where you start and what your velocity is. You, it could be anywhere. And so it turns out that this creates a relatively simple geometric problem that you can solve where the billiard ball will end up after it transforms and flows across the circle along its velocity. And some simple calculations show that you get this rule, and that turns out to be an affine map, uh, which is kind of nice, because we start with this weird system, you don't know what's going to happen, and it turns out to be this relatively nice equation. Okay. So, okay. Um, so we can get just uh, the solution to the evolution by brute force matrix calculation. But uh, actually, I hate calculations, so I will show you uh, how you can get this uh, without any calculation and just uh, some geometry. So first, we just uh, rewrite our system in this form. And uh, what you can see is that uh, there are two parts in my evolution. Uh, first part, I just make a symmetry with respect to y-axis. Uh, second part, uh, I get just a rotation of angle uh, to alpha n minus theta n. So, and it's the same evolution for um, uh, speed and position. So, uh, why is it useful? So, let us imagine that, okay, I start with this, and this system says that first I make a symmetry, okay, sorry, symmetry with respect to y-axis, and then I just make a rotation with the angle. But now to understand what happens, I will do something weird, is that I will just go to the other side of the board, and oh, imagine it's transparent and I can just see. Uh, what I see is that um, the next position is here. And what you get is just a rotation uh, of angle to alpha minus theta. And also note that uh, in real life, the uh, difference of angle between 
uh, speed and uh, position is just minus uh, like the opposite of what we had before, but no, because I've uh, go I've gone to the other side of the board uh, is just exactly the same than before. So uh, yeah, because maybe you're not really convinced uh, with this, uh, get some pictures. And so I just start with some random initial position and speed. And here is the evolution if you're always in the same side of your board. But let's let us know like okay uh, on the left you just have just the same thing like okay evolution and you just uh, stay in the same uh, same side of the board and uh, here is what I see uh, on the right when I just each time I just change side of the board and look at what happens and oh you just see a rotation on the right side so. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is basically why you are like the rotation part is this part like uh, it's what you get if you have a rotation, okay? And uh, the world term with the minus one uh, to the power n is just like okay when we when n is an odd number, I just also have a symmetry and I wanna have also pi here, so I try to have a formula for. Uh, saying that, okay, for even numbers, I just get a rotation, and for odd number, I also have asymmetry. And uh, same thing for for the speed, which explains, like, okay, it, it looks pretty complicated, but at, it's just a rotation composed with asymmetry. Uh, so, okay, <laughs> now we can uh, try to figure out what are the, uh, the dynamical properties of our system. And oh, actually, because it's like just a rotation with some sometimes a um, asymmetry, we just have the same, basically the same uh, characterization of um, of periodic orbits. Periodic orbits is just when the uh, angle of the rotation over pi is uh, a rational number. So actually, we can even uh, figure out and compute the period, but I think I don't have time to explain because like got other things to do. Uh, but actually I it's not really easy, but you can compute and uh, figure out what is the period. So now we we just turn out uh, we just turn to uh, the case in which the angle of rotation uh, over pi is not rational. And so the the result, if we had just a rotation, would be uh, my orbit is uh, dense on the circle and even equidistributes. And actually, the same result stands here, uh, basically because you can just look at the two sequence, uh, theta 2n and theta 2n plus 1, and see that you just got rotation. And so the density and equidistribution uh, still stands. Uh, okay, but now we can try to uh, look at the actual trajectory because for the moment we just uh, we just have look at the uh, the position in which the ball uh, hits the boundary. But we can try to uh, draw the actual trajectory and uh, ask, for example, uh, whether the trajectory would be dense in the interior of the unit disk. Okay, that is my question. Uh, that is the answer. It's no, and um, it's quite easy to see that uh, just because of this. Is that I, I don't know if you remember how we compute the uh, next uh, position, but we had something like this, and the angle beta here was just theta minus alpha, and because uh, at a minus one, uh, it's just the same uh, in the evolution. You always have the same angle here. Which, uh, which means that basically um, uh, your trajectory is contained between two circles. So now here is the new answer. Is that okay? But uh, is the actual trajectory done between these two circles? And uh, here is the answer. Uh, this time is yes. And how to see that is like okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just conclude. Like. Um, 
Okay, here I take one random point between these two circles and draw a uh, epsilon neighborhood. And I'm like, oh, uh, what are the trajectory uh, for which I can just go into the epsilon neighborhood? And so here in the right part of the circle, is when, like, if I bounce in the right part, I'm sure because of the drawing that I will uh, go into the epsilon neighborhood. And because my orbit is uh, dense in the circle, I'm sure that I will go there. So basically, I get uh, density. So, yes, we want to thank uh, um, Jayadev for his advice. And I will just conclude by saying that sometimes it can be helpful to see a problem from the other side of the world. Thanks.